You're watching Talking Point on Strat News Global. I'm Amitabh Brady, and let me introduce from Lancaster, Dr. Mohammad Munir. He's a virologist, a molecular virologist, a lecturer at the Lancaster University. He's also on the WHO expert panel for vaccines. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Munir. Pleasure to be here. Also joining us from Moscow is Dr. Vladimir Andrianov. He's a director of the Department of Clinical Research at the Sechenov University. Zdrasche, Gaspijin Andrianov, Dr. Andrianov, Ochin Priyatna, Swami Srejit, even though it's online. Yes, thank you for the invitation. Dr. Munir, just coming to you, starting with you, the WHO, according to the WHO, they are, I think they are about 139 plus vaccines in development, 29 in various stages of human trials. I think if I'm right, last count was eight in the final phase of mass human testing. Now, Russia, who I'll, I'll of course go to Dr. Andriano, has registered Sputnik V, uh, the, uh, the first country to do that. But realistically, do, you, do we even, are we even closer to having a time frame of when the world can expect a safe, efficient, and equitable vaccine, Dr. Muni? Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Amitabh, for having me on the show. Um, I think we, we do have safety technologies, and we do have experiences enough to really understand the virus and get into the stage where we can account for a very good vaccine. However, there is a, a fine-tuned and well-experience-based uh, 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 protocol available. Uh, and that protocol is really down to the phase three trial, how those are con conducted and executed. And if phase three trial appear to be very good, where are the people who are vaccinated and if they are protected against the disease, we certainly have the chance to get a vaccine uh, relatively quickly. But that time is, is really three to six months for the phase three trial. So that is really the bottleneck. Until that data become available, it's really hard to say which vaccine would work and which one wouldn't work. Dr. Andriana, there is a lot of skepticism in the West, in other countries outside Russia, and maybe even in Russia, about the safety and effectiveness of uh, Sputnik V. Uh, why is there a lack of data from human trials? Why is there such a small size of test groups? Uh, I think only about 76 people. So how is Russia so confident about Sputnik V? Uh, OK, so let me explain. Uh... Uh, this vaccine passed uh, several uh, stages of uh, trials. Uh, first of all, uh, preclinical trial, and after this, uh, it uh, passed uh, phase one, uh, phase one uh, slash phase two uh, clinical trial. Uh, and the uh, amount of uh, participants of the, of this trial was seventy eight. Um, of course, uh, this is not uh, this amount is not uh, enough to uh, to say uh, anything about uh, effectiveness. Uh, but um, uh, after this stage, uh, we could say about uh, safety of this vaccine. Uh, what would uh, I say else? Uh, it is uh, this vaccine based on uh, methodology processes. Uh, methodology process uh, that uh, was. Um, um, that's used uh, by Institute of Gamaleya, uh, producer of, of this vaccine for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, so I think that uh, in this way, uh, we could, uh, at the present stage, uh, we could say about uh, safety uh, of this vaccine. Uh, we need to talk about safety. The numbers 78 there in the cl one clinical one and clinical two, Dr. Munir. Uh, uh, the data should be available. It's not a question of intellectual property being leaked uh, to other people, right? It's how does the world recognize that it is it is uh, being tested uh, tested for safety enough in enough numbers to give confidence? Is uh, how do you read it, Dr. Munir? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 76 uh, number of uh, people who have been vaccinated and looked for the side effects or for the induction of the immune system. I think that's not too bad number. Of course, uh, higher the number, higher the level of confidence would be. Uh, but the, I think the real concern, um, I think, if out there in the scientific community particularly, is the 
lack of the original data. I mean, for instance, if uh, we look into um, AstraZeneca vaccine or Pfizer's vaccine, we do know um, how many people have been uh, vaccinated, what were really the side effects onto the pain, um, acne, or, or on the fever in the beginning. So that really allow us to assess the efficacy um, uh, or, or at least the safety in the first phase one and phase two trial. So until really the, the original data that's been executed on phase one and phase two is not really available for any um, sci person in the scientific community is really hard to uh, not only compare head to head with other vaccines, but also to really uh, look onto the strengths of this vaccine uh, that would uh, be rolled out in phase three and later for the manufacturing. Uh, Dr. Andriana, President Vladimir Putin himself made that announcement. And uh, I don't remember, he said that one of his daughters, who we don't know very much publicly anyway, but that's a separate story, had been given the vaccine. Now, the RDIF, that's uh, the funders, the state funders, the CEO also has gone on record, Kirill Dmitriev, saying that he and his family, his mother is also a, a doctor, has got that. But uh, going forward, Dr. Andriano, what is the timetable? I think this month itself, Sputnik where will be given to, uh, say, medical workers and teachers, and then maybe the mass population, or that's the plan at least, uh, you're looking at October, is that correct? Um, this is just a plan uh, at present. Right. Uh, how it will be realized uh, in real life, uh, I couldn't say, because uh, this is uh, uh, under... Uh, uh, under uh, under uh, view of uh, Minister of Health, of course. Uh, but uh, I have to say several words about uh, the data of uh, this uh, of uh, of this trial. Uh, as I know, it will be available and uh, published in uh, several next weeks. Uh, so we will wait for this uh, for this information. Uh, it will be available, of course. Mm, so <laughs> right, yeah. <clears throat> and even further on when you're looking at the largest uh, clinical the, the stage three trials that data will also be made public dr andriana uh, i think so you it should be published and uh, at present as i know uh the, such uh clinical research uh, such clinical trial phase three uh planned and scheduled uh, in the uh, next several months right dr Muni, uh, what are the dangers if everybody wants a vaccine now it's not even it's not isolated to one country we've seen what's happened over the last seven months uh, the, the american program is called warp speed the russians are the first to announce it the chinese are also saying they're very close it is a major geopolitical uh, race as well, as well as the money that will be involved with big drug companies, correct, Dr. Munir? Yes, absolutely. I think this is unprecedented situation and everybody um, in the public and especially in the country where the disease is still uh, surging is a desperate need to have a vaccine. And I think uh, the vaccine that what we are looking on is not just that it is safe, uh, the way it could be, could be demonstrated by phase one and phase two trial. But what we are looking is that the vaccine that would be deployed in the field would be protective enough against the natural course of infection. And that can only be demonstrated in the phase three trial. And when we do the phase three trial, only 10% of the vaccine would become successful. 90% vaccine usually fail. And that is because there are so many factors involved. For example, what are the comorbidities in the population? People are with diabetes, other viral bacterial infection, HIV, immunosuppression, elderly people, child, children, and people, uh, women with um, babies, pregnant women, all these factors need to be considered in phase three trial before uh, the, the efficacy uh, of this vaccine can be tested and regulated by the regulatory bodies. So there are still a long way to go for any vaccines to be approved. Certainly there is a massive investment, not only from the government, but also from the public sector. But as it stands now until the phase three trial that are fully executed and would become publicly available, not only would be difficult for the regulatory bodies to, to approve any vaccine, but also it would be very difficult to attract the trust of the public to really deploy that vaccine and get that vaccine. Dr. Andriana, uh, the plans that you were uh, talking about, at least that have been made public, I think uh, the plan is that Sputnik, uh, where the production will be ramped up to what 200 million 
doses by the end of this year, uh, maybe including 30 million just for Russia. But there's already been a, a, a rush or a race in terms of at least 20 countries, including India, have expressed interest in Sputnik, where, Dr. Andriyanov. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, international interest for uh, this vaccine is very high. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, but a uh, uh, question about uh, future plans uh, of uh, export potential uh, and export uh, plans, uh, plans of this uh, vaccine, uh, I think, should be addressed to our Ministry of Industry and Trade. I am not responsible to s say anything about this. But the trials that you were talking about, Dr. Andriyanov, though you're saying it'll be made public, uh, such a small size, were there people of all age groups, uh, different uh, people with diseases, or were they all healthy? Do we have any information that has uh, come out, Dr. Andriyanov? Uh, I think that uh, we will wait for any official uh, materials about this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Munir, when, when you... Uh, what are the dangers of going through with a vaccine, though it's extremely important across the globe, uh, in terms of the speed? Uh, what are the dangers that could happen if you push it through too fast? Well, uh, I think uh, what, what we really need to realize that historically we required five to ten years to get a vaccine approved and rigorous, rigorously tested. But if we are going to compress five to 10 years into 12 to 18 months, certainly there is something that is not being done based on what we have learned over the century. So there would certainly be some uh, corners those would be cut. Now, the question is that whether that corner that has been cut is it severe, or is it going to reflect very negative in the future or not? And that is the reason where majority of the uh, front runner vaccines, they combine phase one and phase two trial because there is a relatively less risk involved. But coming on to the phase three, I don't think there is any shortcut into this one because that is the most important step into the vaccine evaluation. And the testament is that any vaccine that would be in phase three, if it protect against the natural course of infection, it would be rolled out. But then doing so, um, as I said before, majority of the vaccines fail at this stage is because there are uh, multiple factors, those from genetics to the environmental factors to the cultural factors. Until mm. those are not addressed properly, the, the count cannot be any on any technology or any vaccine. doesn't matter how much the investment has been made, because ultimately what we are looking on is the vaccine that would stop mm. the infection, mm. that would stop the pandemic, mm. and it would for the good reason, but the worst thing we want to see is that it would do more harm than good. Uh, Dr. Andriyana, while we wait for the data to be made public officially, but starting from the top, from President Putin on with uh, the health minister and the other interviews that we've seen publicly, including the, the funder, the state funder there, uh, Mr. Kirill, they're all expressing uh, great optimism uh, in terms of confidence, not optimism, in Sputnik Ver. Uh, sorry, question for me? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Andrianov. Uh, yes, please, please repeat some uh, connection uh, issues. I, I was just saying that there is, even though the data has not been made public from the president downwards to the people who are involved in this, there's been a lot of confidence expressed in the efficiency, the safety of uh, Sputnik V, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, but uh, anyway, we should uh, wait for any official report about this vaccine. And uh, the, the, there is, I do believe, a lot of testing that has happened, say, with, uh, within the military uh, as well. Uh, as I hear, yes, uh, they participated uh, in uh, in this trial, but uh, this. Uh, but this was not done in our university, so I couldn't say anything about this. And Dr. Andreyanov, what has been the reaction generally in the public in Russia to this announcement? Uh, as usual, uh, some part of uh, Russian uh, 
Russian people said that uh, it is uh, very great, uh, and some parts say that uh, it is not so great. Uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's, uh, it's usual and it's uh, normal, but uh, anyway, uh, everyone, and uh, especially professional uh, societies, uh, are waiting for official report. The official report. Dr. Munil, uh, in terms of just the information that uh, the public, the lay public like me, uh, don't really have or have misperceptions, the coronavirus itself, once a person gets it and recovers, uh, and, and, the, uh, and I'm trying to go further once a vaccine is ready, uh, does that mean that the, the person cannot get uh, corona again a second time? Well, that's a really important and really a chronic question since the start of this pandemic, this has been raised. Let me clarify this one that mm -hmm. whenever we are uh, infected with any virus, our body does a remarkable job and not only try to remove the infection, but also raise a strong antibody responses and immune uh, priming. That immune system uh, should be in principle protective enough to avoid the reinfection. So in in almost all cases, reinfection is impossible. But when we talk about mil millions of cases, then we talk about some of the outliers. Some people might have some genetic issues or underlying um, uh, diseases, immunosuppression. Those could not mount effective immune system in the first place. So those could, can be reinfected. But generally speaking, for example, in the United States or in the United Kingdom, we haven't had any confirmed case which, which has been reinfected uh, after having a strong uh, antibody mediated okay. immune responses so ge generally make it very clear that you cannot be reinfected however the question that is more valid is that we do not know for how long we cannot be reinfected for how long those antibodies would last so we are only you know seven months into this pandemic so for seven months at least seems like antibodies are there for how long those would remain, we don't really know. Based on our coronavirus experiences from, like, for example, classical SARS or MERS, antibodies remain at least for one year. So once the vaccine would become available, at least the protection would remain for one year, if not more than one year. Dr. Andranov, I do believe in the Sechino University itself, uh, there was in a different department, I think, uh, one of the clinical trials was also conducted. Is that correct? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what, what was going on there, how, how uh, long, for a couple of months, I mean, any information that you have? Uh, about uh, this clinical trial or? Yeah, in, in your university. That, that is, of course, I, I think uh, Moscow's oldest uh, medical university. Is that correct as well? Yes, yes. Uh, so, this uh, trial uh, conducted in uh, our university for uh, several months. Um, yes, for several months. And, and um, uh, what else? <laughs> for several months, yes. Yeah. So, Dr. Andranov, as you're saying, you'll have to wait. We'll all have to wait for that data. And, Dr. Munir, I'm sure, will also be. Uh, Looking forward to any data that is coming forward from uh, the Russian side as well. All the best, uh, Dr. Andrianov, not just for the vaccine in Russia, but of course, it will be useful wherever it uh, does come successfully. Uh, Dr. Vladimir Andrianov and uh, Dr. Mohamed Muri, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on uh, Talking Point. Thanks. For thank you. And uh, for all our viewers, you can log on to Strat News Global to get all the latest news and analysis from an Indian point of view, to follow us on our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook, and on Instagram, and just click on that bell icon on YouTube to get reminders for videos that we put up. You've been watching 